I'm now going to tell you the story of how your tax dollars are funding the business of war and your lawmakers are profiting from it. Obviously, we'll do that in the framework of ongoing events and escalations in the Middle East. The Israel War Cabinet has decided to hit back forcefully at Iran. I don't think many of us are surprised by that course of action when Iran sent that missive saying we consider the matter closed. It seemed like an opportunity, but it's hardly surprising that a nation would say, no, we want the right to hit back. Now, for a moment, pause and reflect on the ethics and values of war, retaliation and revenge. And remember, you are a person. It is your business. Remember, I mean, it's literally your business because you are at work working and a significant amount of your labor and your labor dollars are going to fund these various wars, which have to be looked at collectively because they're funded collectively. And pretty soon your Congress is going to be voting to continue to fund them collectively. Let's start by covering the fact that Israel, of course, have decided to hit back forcefully. Channel 12 claims the war cabinet has made the decision to hit back clearly and forcefully against Iran for its missile and drone attack on Saturday night. The response will be designed to send the message that Israel will not allow an attack of that magnitude against it to pass without a reaction, the report says. The response will also be designed to make it plain that Israel will not allow the Iranians to establish the equation that they have sought to assert in recent days. This appears to be a reference to Iran's warning that future Israeli strikes on Iranian territory, including its international diplomatic premises, will henceforth again be met by Iranian retaliatory strikes now, note this military general in the Israeli army. Note what he's standing directly in front of. And you will note already that the US has green lit Israel's response. That means that US, are, the United States, your nation, are not going to use their might, freight and power to bring about peace, but to legitimize further war. How do you stand on that subject? Let me know. Let's have a look, first of all, at the current perspective and Israeli vow to retaliate after this attack. Now to Israel, vowing to respond after Iran's attack over the weekend. Matt Gutman is in Israel with the latest. Good morning, Matt. Hey, good morning, Michael. We are in southern Israel at a military base, and what you're seeing here is part of one of the 130 ballistic missiles fired by Iran at Israel. You can see shrapnel here. It was knocked out of the sky by one of those arrow anti-missiles. This is just a section of it, just the fuel tank up here would have been the warhead, 800 pounds of high explosives. An Israeli official telling me their anti-missile shield worked perfectly, but... See this as editorializing and ask yourself this question, have you seen legacy media reporting from inside Gaza? And do you consider all life to be of equal value or do you consider some human life to be expendable and other human life to be sacred? And have you considered Foucault's position that real power is the power to kill. Who do you get to kill and who gets to kill? At the moment, you know that your state, my state, they hold power over us. They implement the law and all law is undergirded by violence, even as we have discussed before, seemingly tertiary laws like traffic violations. If you do not abide, if you do not obey, if you become disobedient, if you become awakened, if you become sovereign, you eventually will become become, at least in their eyes, a criminal. Let's have a look at how this story is conveyed and relayed. And in the back of your mind, I want you to hold this question. How is this being funded? How is this being funded? How is this being perpetuated and who benefits? It was also a matter of luck that one of these didn't hit a population center, killing dozens and possibly triggering a regional war. The Middle East on edge this morning with Iran vowing a massive response to the slightest action from Israel as Israel vows to retaliate for that rain of missiles. We are closely assessing the situation. We remain at our highest level of readiness. Just in the demimond light of the background of this military official, you can make out the silhouette of an F-35 jet. Now, let me know in the chat who you think makes the F-35 jet. Is it Lockheed Martin? Is it Northrop Grumman? And how much each year do they receive in your tax dollars? Iran will face the consequences for its actions. We will choose our response accordingly. The IDF remains ready to counter any threat from Iran and its terror proxies as we continue our mission to defend the state of Israel. 
Now, of course, you can understand perhaps a person who is a national military official having a very clear and deliberate perspective when it comes to matters. Marshall, even as he is draped across the hood of an F-35, though it were a calendar girl across a Harley Davidson. Those of you that said Lockheed Martin, you are absolutely right. Now, would you like US military might to be used to bring about peace or to perpetuate further? the war. Let's go straight away now to John Kirby to see exactly what pose will be taken by the United States. Is the administration presenting alternatives to Netanyahu? This is, uh, these, this is an Israeli decision to make, um, whether and how they'll respond uh, to what Iran did on Saturday, and we're going to leave it squarely with them. Their decision to make, but are you making suggestions? <laughs> we are not involved in their decision-making process about a potential response. We're not involved in their decision-making process, but do you think it's possible that decisions that are being made might be impacted by economic conditions, availability of artillery and military hardware? Let me know how you feel about that. Indeed, let's consider for a moment where the literal hard cash comes from. We can't bring you this earth-shattering, paradigm-changing content without the support of our partners and without clear heads. That's why I'm happy to tell you that AirTech are the only published, peer-reviewed, patented EMF protection solution. That means electromagnetic field, you know that. Trusted by experts, neuroscientists, doctors, biohackers, and pro-fighting athlete cage fighters, its effectiveness has been proven in real time using EEG brain scan demonstrations. Remove the fear and unknown levels of daily exposure and have peace of mind with Airstech life tune protection. Over 20 years invested in research and development, Airstech technology creates synergy between you and your devices by modulating and transforming chaotic frequencies to match our own biological energy. Unlock better wellness. Go to Airstech.com and use the code RUSSELL30 for 30% off your entire purchase. Have one of these in your area. And remember, if you're on Awakened Wonder, you can see in our 5G video exactly why this stuff is so important. So take advantage of this offer. Click the link in the description. Let's get back to the content, baby. How are US tax dollars being spent? This is from Truth Out. For 2023, the average taxpayer, that's US taxpayer in this instance, will have contributed $5,109 to militarism and its support systems, including war and the military, homeland security, federal law enforcement, and veteran programs. Now, none but the most hard-hearted among us would deny veterans and brave service personnel their due. They should be supported. Those that are willing to put their lives on the line, those that are willing to stand up and fight, true patriots ought be supported. But are you aware of how many former military personnel take their own lives each day? It's a staggering statistic. Are you aware of how many active military personnel live in penury? Are you aware of how many former military personnel adorn the streets of your great American cities? Are you aware of the crime that's being practiced upon your bravest and boldest even now? Are you aware that without us they are truly lost and without them we are truly lost? And unless we have unity of purpose between the people and the military, we will never be able to oppose the corruption that we will continue to describe right now where it matters. Maybe not your heart, maybe not your soul, maybe your pocket. You tell me what's most important. Let's get into it. The biggest portion of that tax bill is for the Pentagon itself. Well, at least they can pass audits on demand at $2,974 per person per year, per taxpayer. That's right. So just think about, you know, better than I do, how long do you have to work for to get $2,974. I was going to say sort of like after tax, but of course it is the tax. You could pay none <laughs> and keep it and decide for yourselves how to spend it in a decentralized, truly representative political system. If only people would start putting forward manifestos that focus on true transition, true reform, true change. More than half of that, $1,748, goes to corporate contractors that benefit from US militarism. That's more than the average monthly rent in the United States. Isn't that astonishing? The average taxpayer gives more to the single largest Pentagon contractor, Lockheed Martin, than to child tax credit. You tell me what you value more highly. Children 
or Lockheed Martin. They continue to profit from inflated Pentagon spending with $9 billion in dividends to shareholders and stock buybacks in 2023. Now, that will be okay as long as stock buybacks isn't a practice that is deployed by corporate entities to artificially inflate the value of their stock practiced by pharmaceutical giants, military industrial complex giants, enabling them to donate to all political parties, perhaps one might argue capturing their intentions and setting their agenda. That would be great as long as there aren't people in your Congress right now earning money on a war that they will vote to fund. Let me know who you think is going to be the top free lawmakers that have got money tied up in stocks and shares for Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, Boeing. Familiarize yourself with their names, but baby, don't be getting on their planes. I pity the fool that gets themselves up on a Boeing because it seems that they put their doors on now with like sort of print stick, blue tack. Do you have those brands over there? Uh, likewise, the average taxpayer gives more for Pentagon contracts with Boeing. That's $87. That's You're paying for those crazy doors than for the Federal Aviation Administration. That's the body that's meant to regulate them and take care of their safety. How do you feel about that? Is it still none of your business? Seems to me that it is your business, literally your business, your life, your time. Every time I'm working, I think this is time I could be with my two daughters and my son. And I resent that my money is going towards funding wars that I disagree with. Do you believe you're being protected or do you believe you're being controlled? Let me know in the chat. Boeing has had a string of safety failures on its commercial flights in the last few years, from planes crashing to coming apart midair. Aviation experts and whistleblowers have exposed ways that Boeing repeatedly chose profit over safety. Astonishing, almost as if there's an institutional problem. Other choices that fund militarism and control instead of humane solutions are just as striking. The average taxpayer contributed more for federal prisons, $32.29 than for mental health and substance use programs, $31. So your mental wellness at a time in the post-pandemic era when mental health and addiction are reaching true pandemic proportions, there are not available funds to support us. I'm not suggesting centralized power and the ability of the federal state to tax you. I'm suggesting the opposite. Minimal ability for the government to intervene. Maximal representative democracy. Maximum individual sovereignty. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Given that the vast majority of incarcerated people are not in federal prisons, but in state and local and jails, uh, uh, prisons and jails, the disparity is actually much wider than that. Still, the comparison shows that decision makers see nothing wrong with imprisoning people with mental illness and substance use disorders rather than providing treatment. Now, when you see an analytic like that, that's information. It shows you. It's a litmus test. It shows you the morality of your nation. It shows you the true principles. Forget the flags. Forget the speeches. Look at the numbers. Look at the numbers. And of course, there's the cost of war. Since the beginning of the century, the United States has almost always either been at war or has been providing major support to someone else's war. The average taxpayer will have contributed $112 to foreign militaries in 2023. So you're funding armies in other nations. Other nations. Let's hope that none of them change their mind, as has happened, well, I don't know, a whole bunch of times. I'm sure you guys saw this from Candice Owens the other day, uh, talking about the ongoing war. Man, this war propaganda just ain't hitting the same. I'm frankly tired of being an economic slave colony to pre-planned wars. My tax dollars, somehow also my tax dollars. Seems extraordinary. Is it possible there could be a better way? Not without an informed population, but how are you going to have an informed population when the legacy media essentially acts as an amplification unit for the intentions of the state? The New York Times might like to posture and pose under the auspices of true journalistic integrity, but you know all their best journalists are out the door now. It ain't all the news that's fit to print. It's all the news that suits the powerful. Let's look at how the New York Times control the narrative around unpopular 
wars. The New York Times has a policy of systematically censoring words like genocide and ethnic cleansing in its coverage of Israel's genocidal assault of Gaza, according to an internal memo obtained by The Intercept this week. Where do these memos come from? Where do those edicts come from? When online conversation, social media conversation, is extensively and increasingly censored, you know that there are laws being passed all over the world. Hate speech laws in Ireland. Canada has already passed new laws. My country, the UK, does anything it can to shut down dissent and isn't afraid to resort to dirty tricks. And your country is amping it up big time as well. And then within the legacy media, which appears to me on the basis of the fact that the New York Times got that exclusive from those CIA bases that have been inside Ukraine for the last couple of years, and from the arrest of Jack Tashera, that they are willing to participate in deep state operations and state agenda while posturing as journalists shows us that in all likelihood they receive the list of words to censor from presumably the same people that economically or otherwise benefit from these ongoing wars. The Times memo instructs its journalists to avoid using the terms genocide, ethnic cleansing and refugee camps. Going to be a short article when writing about Palestine. It directs them to steer clear of referring to areas of Palestine as occupied territory and even further discourages referring to Palestine as Palestine. Okay, so here's all the news that's fit to print. There's been a in and we believe that and if you don't, pay your taxes to the government. Have you noticed that Donald Trump is actually orange? We're serious journalists, not like those online pundits. We point out when someone's orange. We don't let people be orange. Hey, it's sounding like you're criticizing people for being a different color. Ah! Mind blown. Hey. Who provided the explosives for that mind bomb? I don't know. Wasn't Lockheed Martin. Wasn't Raytheon. Wasn't Northrop Grumman. It's all the news that's fit to print once it's been signed off by our bosses. The legacy media. We have to oppose them. They're the enemy. They've always been the enemy. They always will be the enemy. They are to be resisted, ignored, and ultimately, thankfully, they're bringing about their own demise. Perhaps soon, I pray to our eternal Lord, they will collapse into the irrelevance that their lack of principle surely deserves. In addition, the memo claims that words like slaughter, massacre and carnage are often too emotional to describe Israel's bombardment of Gaza. I don't want any emotion in the news. Let's extract all emotion. Well, get ready to have your emotions roused because while you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars, more importantly, you're spending your limited time on this plane of material being before I pray, returning to the limitless consciousness that we call God, from which we all came, there are politicians and lawmakers in your country and surely mine, 48 of them in total that directly benefit from this escalating conflict that to a degree you will be funding. Here is the excellent work of Unusual Wales. God bless that little outfit. I don't know if it's a person or a group of people. Let's have a look. So they say, here's every US politician whose stock portfolio will benefit from a conflict in the Middle East between Iran and Israel. I've aggregated a list of their stocks like Raytheon, RTX, Lockheed, Martin, LMT and more. They're making millions. Here are the politicians. Now, tell me, guys, whose name are you least surprised to see on there right now? Who's this at number four? Why, it's Nancy Pelosi, of course. I couldn't be more astonished. You could knock me down with a feather, as long as that feather was made by Lockheed Martin. Not if it was made by Boeing, it probably wouldn't function. Aerodynamics are not their strong suit, it seems. So what does that tell you? Your tax dollars fund these conflicts, they benefit from their investments and their own portfolios. Well, at least they don't get to vote on whether or not there should be further funding and further wars. Oh no, they do, of course they do, as being ironic. The White House says it opposes standalone Israel military aid bill. The White House said on Monday that it opposes the idea of a bill that would give additional military aid to Israel without funding Ukraine and Taiwan. We are opposed to a standalone bill that would just work on Israel. As we've seen proposed, we would oppose a standalone bill, said John Kirby. Kirby's comments came a day after House Speaker Mike Johnson said he would work on getting more military aid to Israel this week. The plan is expected to send about the same amount of money to each country and each measure will likely pass. Time is not anyone's side here, certainly not the American taxpayers. In either case, they need to move quickly. So there you go, you will continue to fund conflicts 
in Europe to escalate tensions with China and, of course, contribute to the potentially apocalyptic conflict in the Middle East. Is that what you're working for? Remember this. Next time you're working, next time your alarm goes off, next time you shower after work, next time you have to do your IRS filing, next time you're told that you've defaulted, next time you're told that you have to pay your taxes to be a patriot, I want you to remember that your money is not only going to annihilating children across the world, but it's making Nancy Pelosi and her pals richer. You work a little bit harder for Nancy now. Nancy wants to see you sweat. Meanwhile, Lockheed Martin are having the absolute time of their lives look. Lockheed Martin climbed early Monday after British and Israeli defences on Saturday knocked down a barrage of missiles and drones launched. So, like, it's essentially like your team in NFL or NBA or whatever has, like, gone to the playoffs or, you know, progressed. And it. Look, I don't know how your sports work. In us, it's simple knockout competitions and brilliant leagues. And what I will say is that what's happening right now amounts to a boon for some pretty powerful and influential interests. For example, Lockheed Martin rose about 1% on Monday and there you go. That's the way it works. You tell me, what seems more significant to you now? These numbers, your toil to pay tax, or the claims of morality that are made in order to continue to convey your public money into their private hands. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.